welcome to New Song. Come sing a new song with us. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves and that were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like those other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other, for all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Say that with me. Hallelujah. Remember that H in there. We get them. They eliminate that H sometimes in the songs. I think we need hallelujah, right? Well, good morning. Good to be here. New song. Let's pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be truly acceptable in your sight. For you, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Thanks to Ira. And Josh is working both sides at this service, too. He's just flipping around. We pay him for mileage for all the trips back and forth. Do you know I've been preaching Reformation sermons as Pastor Paul was talking with me uh, last evening for over 50 years. I mean, a lot of Reformation sermons. And I kind of wore out some of the scriptures that are picked for this. So I, I went looking for another one that could fit in with Reformation Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. And I found this parable, which is very familiar to many of us, the parable with the Pharisee and the tax collector. And I thought, this is going to fit for one word that is the word of Reformation and the word, frankly, for all of us as we gather here for worship and the expectation to be able to leave here freed from our sins because of Christ's act. And that word is justification. We talk about that in the Reformation all the time. Justification by faith through grace. Justification. Well, who is justified? Will you leave here today from New Song justified? That's our goal. Can we be? And we can't do anything about that. It isn't anything we'll do, but we, we want to reach that place where we leave here freed from the sins that we've brought in. Any baggage that we have, we can leave behind when we leave. That's the goal. But you've got to watch out. Jesus is one who throws some traps in there, things that fool us. A lot of times, uh, I'm, I'm wearing the Pharisee's tie, actually, here, the Ten Commandments. I hope it's not the Pharisee's only, but it's the Ten Commandments. He built his whole life on the code of the law, on the law. And the Ten Commandments were part of that law. But the Lord sort of tricks us because we, we hear the, the Pharisee's talk and it sounds like he's the one that will be justified for all the things he lists that he can do, you know. And yet the Lord switches it on us. He's always doing that kind of turning us upside down. The world is kind of upside down. We've been saying that through these services. The world is in an upset pandemic and everything else. A lot of upside down feelings in our world today. Well, the Lord can do that with this parable. If you're thinking that your money's on the Pharisee, you're going to lose. Because the one who leaves justified is the other guy, the one in the back of the church with his head down, praying a sinner's prayer. But let's look at these two. The, the Pharisee says, well, I, you know, obey the law. I'm an honest man. Well, he's not lying. He does obey the law. He, he, he is strict about that. He says he fasts. He ties, he compares himself to others that he doesn't particularly like, including that tax collector in the back of the church, temple in his case. And then it, it dawned on me. He tithes. Wow. Hey, we're at the edge of a stewardship campaign. You're picking up your envelopes after or before the service so they don't have to be mailed to you or hand-delivered. This man tied. I think there's a spot for him here in the church. <laughs> we'll see if he gets justified. But nevertheless, that's, that's his, uh, his thought, that he's, uh, 
He's very good at those things. And he, he wants to lead the, the, the good life, but he's not sure of the source of that life, which is God, not him. Everything doesn't center around him. He prays, but who does he pray for? He prays for himself. He's self-centered and self-righteous. His righteousness is something that Paul called garbage. It doesn't fit. And that's the trouble with it. And he doesn't like that tax collector in the back either. Matter of fact, he doesn't like sinners. Do you like sinners? I hope so, because we are one, all of us. We're here as sinners, bringing our thoughts to the God of grace that graces our table with the sacrament of forgiveness. He does that. But uh, not the Pharisee. He kind of despises all the people that God loves. And who does he love? Sinners. It's a good thing he does, because if he didn't love sinners, he wouldn't love anybody here. But he loves sinners. Not the sin, but the sinners, the people of all kinds, all over the globe. He loves all of us. So that's where he's wrong. Well, what about this tax collector? You'd think when you make confession, not just in church, but when you're thinking of things uh, at home, uh, or wherever you are in, in dealing with what your life has been, some of the things that you're involved with, and maybe you're kind of thinking, I want to amend my life some. I want some things to be better than, uh, than I've done in the past. I want to improve. I want to do some things better that I haven't been doing. I want to be able to, to tell you, Lord, all the things that I want you to renew in me that I need. Well, the tax collector doesn't do any of those things. He doesn't try to earn his way through the things that he might do. He simply says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. A sinner. And if we're here, you're here because you're a sinner. That's one of the reasons you're here. And certainly the reason I'm here, I can tell you that, because I know I'm a sinner. And, and what is the church but a hospital for sinners who want to be well? It is not a museum for saints. We have enough saints. We need sinners who will be forgiven. And if they're forgiven, they will be justified. I want to go justified out of this place so I can share with others their opportunity to do the same. That's important. Whatever. You know, and... Uh, that's the trouble with this uh, Pharisee. He gets confused in the direction he's gone. He, he kind of looks for his own input into it when God is the one that provides the grace through all of it. The humble sinner in the back of the church, the tax collector, is the one who understood exactly what the plan is. Come in humbly, seek the Lord Jesus Christ Allow him to wash over you and take away those sins and then leave here forgiven and justified. That's what Christ is calling us to. And kind of that's what Luther, this Reformation business, that's why this kind of sticks with me because justified is part of this parable that Jesus told and that's really the center of the Reformation was Luther was struggling. I'm a poor and awful creature. What can I do to save myself? You can't do anything, Martin but yield to Christ and allow him to do it. And in a tower experience, we hear about him reading in the book of Romans all kinds of ways in which he finally releases himself to let God do it all. And he does it all. God loves us. And he does it all the time, right? Loving us all the time. As we hear from our pastor all the time. That's the wonderful thing about it. It's all the time that God is grace-oriented. It's not just part-time, it's all the time. I don't do anything all the time well, do you? I mean, think about it, you know. I don't, but I strive to do some things that are right, try to follow that path that he leads, but the way for that path to be successful is grace. It's got to be through God's grace. What he did for us on the cross is everything, and Luther finally discovers that, and we, we see this where he puts these theses on the kiosk, the door is the bulletin board for the community, and the people are learning that grace is what it's about. I don't merit this forgiveness, but I receive it graciously 
from a God who loves me that much. And we have that wonderful gift of a sinner's prayer coming from that tax collector. It's very tempting sometimes to, to hear this parable and then say, boy, I'm sure glad I'm not like that Pharisee. <laughs> but as soon as you say I'm not like that Pharisee, you see you are that Pharisee. It, it's, a, it's a trick question here. You have to be careful with this because the Lord wants us to make that leap to being that worse person that opens up to God by saying I'm a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I know you have given your life through your son, and I accept that gift of grace, and that leads me to be justified. That's so important for us. You know, I had the opportunity in my lifetime during the 70s and through the 80s to work with the Billy Graham organization at seven crusades, major crusades. Two were here in Las Vegas in the late 70s, early 80s, and during that period of time, we did it at the convention. We didn't have the Thomas and Mac then. He could have filled that for sure. But nevertheless, I did, did the, when I did the first crusade here, I was among a number of pastors that supported Billy Graham coming here to Las Vegas, Henderson. When we, uh, when we did that, we, we divided up responsibilities, and I was given the prayer before the offering. I kind of like that, really, whatever. And when I did that, it was very successful. We had a lot of fun with the people. I like a little humor, you know, in, in sermons and in activities. I think it's important. A sense of humor is everything for me and has been for my ministry. So that was part of it. Well, the interesting thing is, in Corinthians, it says, God loves a cheerful giver, right? You've heard that before. Isn't it better to be a cheerful giver than to be a Grinch about it. It's so much better. And you know the word cheerful in Greek? The word is hilarious. I love it. I want to hear laughter out there when we do the offering. When you're picking up those envelopes out there, laugh a little bit. Reading all that good information that Pastor Paul and the team has built together for you, have some laughter, have some joy. God's grace has given you that opportunity. So Billy Graham heard that one. He kept me for the second crusade, then introduced me to Los Angeles, Anaheim, Denver, Colorado, Baltimore, Maryland, and Philadelphia. And I got the chance to preach in ever those, a brief, it's three to five minutes, you know. Billy Graham had much longer than that, which he should have, <laughs> frankly. But I could do a lot more with hilarity and laughter and joy in giving myself to Christ and in doing it through my offerings. That's really a key, you know. Sometimes as pastors used to dread the stewardship season, oh, here we are again. Not true, not true. It's a time for joy and laughter and the opportunity that God who has given me grace, I didn't earn anything. God has given me his grace so that I'm free from all my sins. And he's done that for me by allowing his son to be killed. He did all that for me. The least I can do is laugh and have joy with him. So this is Reformation Day, October 31st, Halloween. <laughs> That's great, you know. Halloween means, you translate, it's holy evening. It's not always holy evening, sometimes holy hell sometimes, and I know the <laughs> police department and others are not real thrilled about it always, but, but it is a holy time. That's what Luther discovered 500 plus years ago, and no, I wasn't there to the original. But I, I've been back to the Castle Church in Wittenberg a couple of times, and I have seen that door, the door. That is the door that became the kiosk. That's been, it's been changed a few times. But it's a reminder for us, we're forgiven by grace, and I'm grateful for that. So this holy evening, I ask us, to raise a little laughter to Christ for all he's done for us, for everything he is, and be humble. Be the one that bows the head and calls out to the Lord Jesus Christ, be merciful to me, Lord. I'm just a sinner, and I know how much you love me. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you.